गाइस वेलकम बैक दिस इज डॉक्टर मारवा एंड टुडे आई विल बी ऑफरिंग टू यू कपल ऑफ वीडियो सॉल्यूशंस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू कपल ऑफ क्वेरीज दैट हैड कम ओवर सो द ऑब्जेक्टिव टुडे डिस्कशन इज ट्रबल शूटिंग द वेंटिलेटर एंड आई हैंडल क्वेरी नंबर 1 इफ यू लुक एट द एबीजी रिपोर्ट्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट हियर आई कैन एक्चुअली डिवाइड दिस डिस्कशन इनटू इशू नंबर 1 ए एंड 1 बी सो आई हैव हैंडल्ड द टू साइमल्टेनियसली you will notice the fact that uh, in the first scenario the patient is only having a po2 to be on the lower side normal partial pressure of oxygen is in a range of 60 to 100 this particular patient is having extremely low po2 but the pco2 of the patient is normal you very well know the normal value is 35 to 45 so this particular patient is having type 1 respiratory failure and the query is what will you do to raise the po2 of this patient in contrast when you focus on the adjacent abg report the primary problem of this patient is not hypoxia but it is rather a increase in the values of carbon dioxide so we basically need to understand what are we going to do in a person who is let me say developing a, or or maybe in the process or developing a carbon dioxide narcosis because 60 is substantially high value so we need to look at the solutions per se Uh, on the left hand side issue number 1a if he says in the question what is the first step for management of this patient then your primary answer would be that you will increase the fio2 of the patient you obviously start with the fio2 of 100 then titrate it down but in this case you will have to do a up titration of the fio2 of the patient however if fio2 alone is not working then you might have to consider uh, the peep values to be also increased that is positive end expiratory pressure and this peep value what it will do is it will help in keeping the airways open now uh, when you increase the peep there are a couple of disadvantages also which is why i have mentioned peep as point number 2 here one is that it can uh, compromise the venous return and the compromise of the venous return can contribute to hypotension developing in the patient or for that matter of fact uh, if the compliance of the lung is affected there is also a possibility of barotrauma and uh, because of these two disadvantages i have primarily mentioned fio to be to be uh, the primary solution for this patient however when it comes to the right hand side if he says what is the first step for management of this patient there are two options one is to increase the respiratory rate or the minute volume and second is to increase the tidal volume so one is a easy step i mean if you increase the respiratory rate you can increase the minute volume of the patient and the faster breathing will help in clearance of carbon dioxide from the body in contrast uh, let me say if increase of respiratory rate is not given in the choices then another setting that is uh, you can vary and uh, can achieve benefit for your patient is increase in the value of the tidal volume now obviously i why i mentioned tidal volume increment is secondary to the fact that the higher tidal volumes can again be associated with barotrauma so these are the answers for issue number 1 that i basically wanted to remember and now we go to issue number 2 for today the query was if a patient is on a ventilator and there is a sudden drop in the value of po2 what could be the causes and what could be the solution so there is no one single solution and to help you i would like to you know mention a mnemonic here so as i have highlighted time and again i'm not a big fan of mnemonics but because we are reading this for first time so it would be a good idea to actually just go through the data and then obviously once it becomes a reflex for you i mean it will be relatively easy so uh, the mnemonic that i can mention at the moment would be uh, the term dope now from the word dope uh, you can remember in fact the first two alphabet d and o would be representing the same thing that the endotracheal tube could either be having a displacement uh, especially like if a person is having a prone ventilation being done like in ARDS cases so when you are changing the position of the patient there is a distinct possibility of a tube displacement or i can just put in the word obstruction so do is going to be representing a single problem for the patient now we are going to use alphabet p and uh, well you need to do a chest x ray for it and you will be able to pick it up clinically also because there will be a hyper resonant chest and most importantly absent breath sounds that's going to be pneumothorax now we are going to use this mnemonic once again as pe and with pe two things would definitely come to your mind one would be pulmonary embolism very important especially in the setting of covid 19 because you very well know that covid is also a hypercoagulable state a lot of your patients might have actually expired because they ended up with a pe a pulmonary embolism and uh, another possibility or the mnemonic is being used once again pe alphabet is pulmonary edema who could obviously be cardiogenic and non cardiogenic and you can differentiate between the two primarily with help of bnp values which are going to be grossly elevated in in a patient of uh, cardiogenic pulmonary edema 
so the message here is that if you get this data right you would definitely be in a position to handle your patients relatively better and over and above this an extra point that i'm adding in case you find that none of these are present and still the po2 of the patient is on the lower side you have ruled them out clinically then it could be a mucus plug there's one more cause i'll mention towards the end of this particular slide but if you just look at dope d o p e and just add a alphabet m after that that is mucus plug or you can remember it from the p alphabet itself but i mentioned this subsequently because that is to be considered later and if there's a mucus plug you will anyway help to go in for bronchoscopy of the patient now a few details here before i move on to my next issue if it's a pneumothorax how would you identify it i mentioned that when you will be doing a percussion over the chest there will be a hyper resonant note the reason why this is important to practice at the moment is because i'll be describing couple of more problems where you could be having atelectasis so how do you differentiate atelectasis from pneumothorax is is the primary objective i mean atelectasis they might be collapse of the lung segment so they might be dullness to percussion but in pneumothorax there is air at positive pressure so it would be hyper resonant and then there would be absent breath sounds on that particular side and obviously uh, when you are going to do a chest x ray you want to get the classical deep sulsa sign that would help you pick it up and mediastinal shift will obviously be present when it comes to pulmonary embolism what are the clinical findings that would be present in a patient one of the important ones would be second heart sound of this particular patient can be wide fix split i hope everybody remembers wide fix split for asd nobody would ever forget that but wide fix split i have discussed even with respect to pulmonary embolism then with the opposite side of the stethoscope the bell you will be able to hear a s3 why because in pulmonary embolism it is the right ventricle of the patient that will fail but there will be no evidence of any bilateral crepitations in the chest the pulmonary edema of the patient will be absent so if you are evaluating a patient who has had a sudden decrease in the values of po2 and you notice that the neck veins are extremely uh, i would say uh, congested then you could either be having pneumothorax or you could be having a pulmonary embolism but then there are certain findings which would help you in differentiating like i explained about the breath sounds aspect for pneumothorax i highlighted about the abnormalities of second heart sound and third heart sound with respect to pulmonary embolism and if it is a pulmonary edema let us assume it is going to be a cardiogenic pulmonary edema if it is a cardiogenic pulmonary edema the second heart sound of the patient will always be narrow split I hope you recall the fact left ventricular failure will always contribute to a narrow split second heart sound logic is present in the heart sounds topic so I'll not get into that but uh, yeah at this juncture you will definitely be having a s3 but how would you differentiate i mean there would be bilateral crepitations and that would be fine crepitations that will usually start in the infra axillary areas and would start going up so you definitely can differentiate now if it's a mucus plug then uh, both the diagnosis of it i mean if you ruled out all the other causes then you have to take up or schedule the patient for a bronchoscopy and uh, this bronchoscopic evaluation will not only help you in diagnosis but in the same setting you can also go in for removal of the plug and you will notice that the oxygen saturation of the patient will improve so issue number 2 that i have highlighted is what do you think about when there's a person having a sudden decrease in the value of po2 these are the possibilities from the mnemonic dope which i repeat once again could be a tube displacement or an obstruction or p could be for pneumothorax then could be pulmonary embolism or a pulmonary edema and last but not the least mucus plug over and above this obviously there can be some rare causes which i'll just say at the moment like uh, lots of time you notice that you might be giving fentanyl to the patient now fentanyl itself can contribute to chest wall rigidity and if there's going to be rigidity of the chest wall then i can say that uh, the compliance is affected with respect to you see the lungs are fine but the chest wall is not able to contribute to the proper inflation of the lung so therefore the po2 of the patient can definitely decrease let's look at the next issue that is coming up but before that i'll mention about two terms that you always read about whenever your patient is on a ventilator one is peak pressure and second is plateau pressure so let's knock some sense into what do you mean by the word peak pressure what does it represent after all and then what do you mean by the word plateau pressure see guys peak pressure is mainly with respect to the circuit that you have maintained i mean there's a tubing going from the ventilator to the patient then the patient has a dead space then the patient would be having i mean the airways conducting airways by which the air will reach the alveoli so the point is the resistance of the tubing per se and the resistance of the bronchial airways is uh, the peak pressure and when it comes to the plateau pressure then we are talking about the compliance of the chest you see plateau pressure is primarily a reflection of the alveolar pressure or i can just say the fact that uh, 
this is representative of the compliance of the chest now why are we studying these two aspects is uh, gonna become very clear when i show you issue number three or possible questions that can come up uh, they can give you a scenario where the ventilator readings are showing an elevated peak pressure and a normal plateau pressure now what does it mean when you read the word elevated peak pressure i'll just go back to my previous slide i just explained to you what do you mean by the word peak pressure here is that uh, it is the circuit which is connecting to the patient that might be having a physical obstruction so if i say elevated peak pressure that basically means that there would be either obstruction in the tubing or there could be obstruction in the bronchi of the patient so let us look at the scenarios which are responsible for a elevated peak pressure i'm going to list them down before you three important causes that you must know whenever it's going to be a scenario given to you in the exam for elevated peak pressure and a normal plateau pressure normal plateau pressure means that the compliance of the chest is fine alveoli are not having any physical problem but it is the conducting airways that might be physically obstructed or maybe the connection of the patient with the ventilator that is hampered so the first thing that will come to your mind will obviously be a kinked endotracheal tube and lots of time you would have noticed that if proper neuromuscular sedation is not or neuromuscular paralysis plus sedation is not given to the patient uh, then the patient might actually bite on the endotracheal tube so just putting in a technical term white lock this bite lock can contribute to, I mean, uh, uh, the hampered uh, delivery of uh, oxygen to the patients. The second would obviously require both a X-ray or a CT because there would be atrial ectasis or a collapse of lung segment. Uh, that is a mucus plug. And the third important uh, reason for this could be bronchospasm. This guy could be a patient who's having a pre-existing COPD or an asthma. In contrast, now let us look at a scenario where in the ventilator settings he gives you both elevated peak pressure and elevated plateau pressure. If that is happening, then not only the circuit but even the alveoli are getting affected. So if he gives you a scenario of this one, then the first reason that you need to think of where both the problems are occurring is that your endotracheal tube, this time it is not blocked, it has slided into one side, it has gone only to let me say the right side. So I'm writing the word main stem intubation. Mark my words there. Last time I was saying physical blockage of the tube by the patient clenching on the endotracheal tube per se. But this time I'm not saying a blockage. The tube has slided onto one side. So you need to readjust the tube and the pressures will definitely settle down. The next important reason for this can be barotrauma. That would be pneumothorax. It could be pre-existing or it could be hydrogenic. And lots of time in your uh, intensive care units, you would have seen COVID patients deteriorating because COVID itself is causing so much damage to the lungs that uh, when you are going to put him on the ventilator, uh, I'm talking about invasive ventilation of the movement, a lot of them might actually have a drop in saturation. Why? Because there's a pneumothorax occurring. Another reason for this could obviously be air telectasis. Now, this could be secondary to position of the patient. You know, if a person is going to be lying in the hospital bed for long duration, then it will contribute to collapse of the basal lung segments. Or for that matter of fact, patient could be having pulmonary edema. This pulmonary edema can be of two varieties, cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic. And you will obviously have to uh, differentiate between these. And the discussion for this is present in the main app. Uh, this is more of an update or I would say a problem solving issue. And uh, as I highlighted, I mean, when it comes to atal lactases in a patient, uh, what will you do? You know, for pneumothorax, you will obviously put in a chest tube. But for atal lactases, the initial management would be to go in for chest percussion. Uh, do remember these words that I'm saying. Initial step would be chest percussion. Then we have a couple of recruitment maneuvers. And uh, with help of these, we are able to, you know, basically the non-involved alveoli or I would say the alveoli which are not contributing to the respiration. They are the ones which can be recruited once again or they can be, you know, suddenly woken up and say, okay, join, join and contribute to improving the oxygen saturation of the patient. And uh, if not working, then obviously subsequently we might even require a bronchoscopy even in atal lactasis. So uh, when it comes to pneumothorax, obviously an intercostal drainage tube would be put in the fifth intercostal space in the mid-axillary line. Uh, in pulmonary edema, as I've highlighted, if it is cardiogenic, you would be using diuretics in the patient. And uh, obviously along with that, non-invasive ventilation will be working. But uh, if it is non-cardiogenic, then there is no role of diuretics. Then uh, you need to basically go in for low volume ventilation. And the aspects of low volume ventilation per se with respect to ARDS has been discussed in the section in the ARDS section of the app where I've highlighted regarding the special features. 
and in case you are not using the app then you can go back to the covid discussion that i have taken on this channel only and you will be able to uh, realize the importance of low volume ventilation there where i have told specifically i mean what is the tidal volume to be used because normally the tidal volume that you set up is 12 ml per kg but in uh, low volume ventilation in ARDS which is a non cardiogenic pulmonary edema the tidal volume is kept as 6 ml per kg so i've handled three problems at uh, for discussion just have a quick look at these once again the topic troubleshooting the ventilator how do you handle hypoxia how do you handle only isolated increase of carbon dioxide one a and one b have been handled then we have talked about causes of sudden decrease in oxygen saturation while the patient is on ventilator and then how do you identify them and once you identify obviously the treatment can follow and then i have talked about a permutation combination again for point number three in two parts a and b with fluctuations of the peak pressure and the patio pressure so uh, do keep your comments going and uh, let me know regarding any other queries that you have with respect to the ventilator settings and i'll be definitely glad to assist you to my best capabilities thank you so much for your patience and hearing me out